everybody, welcome to this premiere. Today, we will be talking about my first official 2021 Atlantic Hurricane season predictions. I, and also, uh, I don't have a map for my numbers, but um, yeah, I'll just tell you my numbers and I will explain to you which map each, what it means. So this, of course, so of course we know the Bermuda High. We're going to start off with this is how much areas will be affected by the Bermuda High. Pink is the most affected down to light green, which is the least affected. So it goes pink, purple, red, re light red, yellow, green, light green. So pink to light red are like strong. So, so light red all the way up to pink or pink all the way down to light red, light red all the way up to pink. Um, those are the strong categories. They get strongly affected by the Bermuda High, I'm predicting. Yellow is low to moderate. Green and green is low to very low, and light green is very low. Um, so, yeah, this will definitely, so as we do see, these will support, uh, um, systems tracking into the Bahamas, into the Caribbean, the Gulf, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina. Mainly, I think the Bahamas, Cuba, Dominican Republic. Oh, sorry about that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Bahamas, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. The state, I, uh, state, the state I just mentioned, I think, will have... The mo the place I just mentioned, I think, will definitely have the highest risk, especially Florida, Bahamas, Dominican Republic, uh, Cuba, and then of course adding on, like I said, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, and of course other places could be badly affected too. But those are the main ones I think. This is the shear map. White is average to near average shear. Red is above average shear. Blue is below average. Light blue is very below average. And uh, greenish, very light blue is the uh, extremely below average. So, yeah, in a fading La Nina to a neutral. And also, guys, I do think in this hurricane season, we will have a cool neutral to a La Nina. That's what I think we will have this 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. I'm very confident on that. Those or what I think the answer phases will be. Um, so, yeah. We have the red. Because usually in a fading La Nina, we do, and that could come back, we do see this uh, uh, above average shear um, in the north eastern Atlantic. Parts of the north eastern Atlantic is why I have that. Um, and I, I've noticed in a La Nina neutral, we don't really get affected that much around the Great Lakes. I don't know why I filled in the Great Lakes, but I just did. And But we don't really get affected in that really North Atlantic that much besides the Northeastern. So, uh, since because of that, I put uh, average shear. And I also put average shear for parts of the Eastern Pacific. And also, guys, I, I might add on to Eastern Pacific some parts of this, but, um... I'm not really going to be talking about Eastern Pacific. I might say my numbers for Eastern Pacific. I might not. You'll have to see. But I won't make, like, specific maps for their land threats or really specific for them in this video. But I'll probably make a video just for them or one with the Atlantic in the Eastern Pacific. It's most likely going to just be another video with the Atlantic, adding on also the Eastern Pacific. That's probably when I'll talk about them mainly. Uh, well, not mainly, but a lot more. Atlantic will always be mainly. Anyway, so we do see the uh, Central Atlantic, as you see, the Caribbean, the um, Gulf, the MDR get affected a lot and in a neutral to a lot. Of, I do think an extreme below average here that's mainly like, I would say, not too, it's not like no sheer always. No, that's not what it means. It's not like that. So, yeah, but yeah, we do see like Florida, Louisiana. Alabama, Mississippi, parts of Georgia, a little bit of South Carolina, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Bahamas, a little bit of Yucatan, parts of South, uh, South America, getting the really below average, and then also really below average, but a little more sheer, but still below average. Um, 
way more of the Gulf, Yucatan, more of the Caribbean, up to north parts of North Carolina, and then the the last below average, which is most outer below average, just a regular blue, all the way up to possibly Maine, all the way, to, and in neutral and uh, and neutral and um, La Niñas, it also helps a little bit of the EPAC. And also, in El Nino's, it also helps parts of EPAC and neutrals. So, that part of this part of the EPAC is really a part where it's always kind of getting help, sometimes not getting helped by the ENSO phase, but usually it does. Here is my overall risk map as for land as well as my wind risk map. So the wind and overall risk map go together uh, on this map. So the greens, we're having tropical depression winds at max. Not too much, I would say. Maybe tropical storm. You could get, you could get strong storms, like tr- strong tropical cyclones. Now, very unlikely because it's really it's northeast. That's only not in the a lot of the colors. So... Unlikely, but you can still, still get tropical cyclones and greater impacts than the color you're in outside of the color. But it's unlikely in my predictions. So, yeah, green is tropical depression, tropical storm, and also the lowest risk, of course, besides white or no color. The white is no color. Yellow, we do see um, parts of Texas, a little bit of Louisiana, a lot of Central America, uh, parts of Georgia, South America, North no, no, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. We do see a uh, tropical storm to hurricane force winds. I think could happen. Um, and the second risk, a uh, green, uh, no, the red risk. I think hurricanes to strong hurricanes, potentially weak major hurricanes. I would say, but probably still, I don't, not too confident on that. I'm not saying it's unlikely. I'm not saying it's likely. I'm just not confident. That's the red again. Uh, Texas, Louisiana. Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Central America. Pink is strong hurricanes to major hurricanes, I think. And again, it's pretty much in all the same areas as the red area. Now, purple area, I think major hurricanes will happen. In Bahamas, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Alabama, Georgia, parts of Georgia. Um... Yeah. So, yeah. A rainfall map. This is my heavy rainfall slash flooding map from Tropical Cyclones risk map. It goes separate. So, yeah, the heaviest rain, the most flooding from Tropical Cyclones will be in parts of Texas, little parts of, parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, definitely, Georgia, uh, uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, uh, Bahamas, Dominican Republic, Cuba, the um, the layer out of that, Texas, Central America, Arkansas, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. In the region, the rainfall is much larger. Of course, tropical cyclone, heavy rainfall, and flooding reaches very far out. Strongest parts, too, very far out. The layer behind that, Central America, Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and maybe, and Virginia, but per, no, Virginia, no. Then the light is light, right? Light, and again, you could have very heavy rainfall that's greater in color or not outside of this, but again, in my prediction, it's very unlikely. So, all of these are very heavy rainfall and flooding from tropical cyclones. All the, That's what all the colors mean for this map, but it's just less and less throughout the colors. And then the least color is the light uh, green, which is cent- uh, Central America, Texas, uh, Oklahoma, potentially, uh, Arkansas, and all the way up to potentially a little bit of Maine. And fly- and then we have my overall map. Purple is the worst. Pink is the second word. Worst. Red is the third worst. Orange is the fourth worst. And uh, blue is below average. So blue, we got the below average. Again, Fangor, Union, usually above average cheer there, less activity. MDR, I'm expecting based on cheer and uh, things like that. I'm expecting a moderately above average for that as of now. Then the red, m- well, no, uh, well, no, 
Oh, no. Orange is not moderately above average. It's uh, slightly to above average to above average. Now, um, red is moderately above average, which is greater than above average. Um, I'm expecting very below average here. They are definitely favorable SSTs to lead to overactivity. Um, pink. Oh, and also the SST map is also equal to this one. Um, pink is like a 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 to max 1 degree Celsius above, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that really is a lot and potentially very low shear, very favorable SST. It's very active. And uh, sorry, uh, purple is um, very above average, like potentially up to 1.5 to above Celsius, which is, again, very active. Cuba, Bahamas, Dominican Republic, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, parts of Georgia, maybe a little bit of South Carolina. Uh, uh, very favorable SSTs, uh, below average here. Definitely a lot of activity there. Now, if we're going to look at this, uh, missed can sips, the, um, uh, I've been looking at the CFS, and it really is under, like, showing, like, 1,015, 1,012 millibar per meter high, which I think is really stupid, showing weird SST numbers, weird cheer, and because of that, I don't want to add uh, stuff that's really probably not going to happen, so I am only showing camp in this video, so, in this video. So we do see in April the month, and the we're not using seasonal SST anomalies. We're using monthly SST anomalies because even though seasonal goes through faster, it's because it's three months period. Um, and I want to be more specific with monthly. So yeah, right now not much May, definitely average to above average in Caribbean, um, Gulf parts of MDR and Atlantic in May. Definitely favorable for early. Then June, it's the same for around the same for Gulf Caribbean MDR. But then, as we get into July and August, we do see, look at this. Look, October, September, August, we really do see. So November, October, September, and August, we really do, do see those temperatures really start to really be a very above average. Very above average for Gulf, Caribbean, MDR, Atlantic, very above average, it seems. So, yeah, and we are lucky we're not getting those pinks. So, yeah, we could be seeing, according to this, up to 1, potentially up to 1, 1. 1.5 above in Caribbean potentially Gulf Caribbean, Gulf Caribbean and main parts of not DR. And then we move on to 2020. Again. And it's already showing 2022 very above average. And I've noticed that uh, Cancepts is very accurate, by the way. Seasonal? Uh, yeah, so. So it starts below average in June and July. And June and July, uh, and May, and again, June, July, and May, even though precipitation is a big factor in tropical cyclones, again, it's not based, and this does not mean unfavorable for tropical development, it's just what it's predicting, and I've noticed cancer, it's a very accurate model. So yeah, I'm expecting our first tropical cyclone, by the way, in uh, early to mid-May, that's what I'm expecting, I'm definitely expecting um, early season again. And again, National Hurricane starts advisory is May 15th. But yeah, we do see above average Caribbean and Gulf a lot still in May. In June, a little bit above average Caribbean and Gulf. And July, pretty much a little bit above average in Caribbean and Gulf still. But June and July are usually the least active months of hurricane season, as you probably know. But MDR, very active, above average precipitation. But then as we get into August, June, July, August. We really do see very above average still in MDR, but even more above average in Gulf and Caribbean. Not more than MDR, but but yeah, just showing it, it's moving out. September, which is really when we start to get the peak. So August is part of the peak, but I think September and October is the overall peak. So August, September, really above average in the MDR, Caribbean and Gulf. And then October. October, kind of below average precipitation. 
for MDR, but definitely above average parts for Gulf and Caribbean. And then November really starts. But again, this is one model run. So it seems September is going to peak, peak. And it doesn't mean the tropical cyclones will barely have any rain. It doesn't mean they're going to be not strong or anything. This is just the overall precipitation anomaly. Doesn't mean it's going to be blotch. Of Again, it's likely going to be above average. It doesn't mean it's going to be barely any precipitation or hurricanes. No, it's, they're still going to be a very lot, maybe even above average, but I would say of average to above average, so potentially extremely above average precipitation in the cyclones this year. So doesn't mean that at all. And to if you guys real and just in case, I'll be nice and show you guys the CFS V2 seasonal precipitation anomaly. So here it ext so so yeah uh. So, yeah, they're showing a really above average uh, precipitation, it seems. And, uh, TMC 600, yeah, also above average. You also a pretty above average for Caribbean, Gulf, and MDR. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button. I'll see you guys next time.